In today's video, I'm going to be filming insects with my probe lens. For those that don't know, the probe lens is a very specialised lens. Um, it's actually a two times macro, so it'll magnify twice past a normal macro lens magnification. But it's only 24mm despite being this long, and that means you can get in nice and close and get this really nice bug eyed view. It's actually waterproof up to here as well, although I'm not using that function today, hopefully, unless it really rains. And I'm using this lens, which is Canon fit on a Panasonic, which is Mac 4 thirds fit body. So I've actually got a speed booster, which makes it F11. And I think it's only about uh, 30 mil, something like that, or 29 mil it gives me. So I don't quite get the full bug eyed effect, but as you'll see in this video, it just gives some quite nice results. So I'm back here again at the B-Bank at Thameside Nature Reserve. Although there's a bit of blue sky, it was really sunny this morning and although as I'm talking the sun is coming out, the sun has been obscured after about 10 o'clock this morning, so everything is becoming inactive. There were two bee flies just sat there, unusual for this typically flighty species. I first filmed this one sat on the B-Bank itself. It looked somewhat bedraggled, so I suspect it's just emerged. I then went in for some close-up footage to try and get that compound eye and those ridiculously long mouth parts. They would have recently emerged from the bee bank itself, having overwintered in one of the solitary bees' burrows after they fed on the bees' larva and the pollen the bee had stored for it in there. The second bee flower was perched on some grass, so I was able to try some different angles. I was even able to try some head-on footage. I can't believe how lucky I'm being with these bee flies. They're posing better than I've ever had bee flies pose before. So yeah, good morning so far. Now I only put the probe lens in my kit bag on a whim today, so I didn't bring all my equipment I normally bring with it. I've got a special support rig that I normally use. But I'm improvising today. I've got my tripod um, and I'm using the tripod mounting plate, which is on the camera, or on the camera cage I should say. Um, and I'm literally just sliding that back and forth on the tripod head for when I want to change the focus. There's a few solitary bees sat on the dandelions behind me here, so I've been filming them as well. This little bee was not moving much without the heat of the sun, but as a little bit of warmth came through the cloud, there was some activity. On the next dandelion, two bees were moving around. until the cloud returned again and they slowed down, this one posing nicely on the edge of the flower. Back on the bee bank, a small bee was sat on a gorse branch. And a female of a larger bee species was digging away, making a burrow to fill with pollen and lay her egg in. I was hoping for a shot of her head. But despite various twists and turns, I never really saw her head. After watching for a good 10 minutes, she continued to burrow, so I went back to the bee fly for some more footage. Back on the dandelions, a medium sized bee was feeding away nicely demonstrating that this wildflower, often regarded as just a weed, is an important food source for many pollinating insects early in the spring. Well, the sun just came out and I noticed one of the bee flies had gone. So I sit up on the second one on the grass and it started warming its wings and then it took off. Really chuffed, I managed to capture it taking off on the probe lens. and I get shouted over by a wren. <laughs> well the sun's just got in, but the birds are still singing, and the little bit of sun we had seemed to have woken up the velvet mites, which are these little red spider-like things. They're only, what, three, four millimetres long max? The mites were mostly on this gorse branch, and it required a tripod at maximum height to reach. You can see here, it was a case of carefully moving and focusing the lens and taking my hands off to make sure I didn't shake the camera, the effect of which would have been amplified by the high magnification and length of this lens. I managed to capture another one as it clambered over the bee bank itself. You can probably see why they're called red velvet mites, 
that soft looking hairy covering on their body. As they move around you can see them using that front pair of legs like antennae and that bright red colour warns predators that they don't taste very good. This one was sitting still and I got some in the environment shots before going in for some close ups. As I got in closer I could see why it was sat still. It was eating an even tinier invertebrate which is not that surprising as the adult mites are predators. I had to be careful framing at this point as a dust speck had appeared I think on the outside of the lens but I couldn't get rid of it. I had to frame it in places I could clone it out easily later which was annoying because it was quite near the middle of the lens. Of course cloning out a spot in video is much harder than with stills where instead of just one frame you have to deal with at least 24 frames for each second. Having got some nice footage and the light getting worse I started wrapping up for the day but with my confidence boosted by this good day it wasn't long before I was using the lens again. It's now a couple of days later than the last lot of footage you've just seen but I've come out into my garden because the sun's come out and I know down the end of the garden here that I get loads of wolf spiders. Now it's mid-afternoon they're all warmed up in the sun and so of course as soon as I move they all scatter but if I wait long enough I can start getting some footage and I started off trying to film these ones on the pot. This one was in a patch of sun in the shade of a nearby plant. And on the log in front of it, I've got some nice footage as you can see. These wolf spiders don't build webs, but instead hunt by chasing their prey down. Though they seem to be easily chased off by ants themselves. The sun's now moved around a bit, so I've shifted my focus on to the logs and stones and bags of stones that I've piled up in the corner here. As you can probably tell, this is my wild corner. Well, I say wild corner, it's the I can't be bothered to maintain it corner, where I just dump all the logs and old pots and stuff. But the wolf spiders love it. And there's a big group of them here. And as the shade's coming across, they're all getting condensed into a smaller, smaller area. And there's a little bit of bickering and uh, disagreement going on between the spiders. So I've zoomed out a bit. And I've put the aperture nearly as narrow as it'll go to maximize depth of field. I'm just filming in slow motion, trying to capture some of these interactions. And you can see, I've also got my little LCD screen here to help me uh, see what I'm recording, checking the focus is okay and stuff like that. It didn't take long for the spiders to come back out and sunbathe, although I have sped this footage up four times real speed. and it didn't take long for the interactions to start. I've slowed this footage down to a fifth of normal speed. There seemed to be some competition for the best spots. So they all seem to be scared of the ants. This time, filming in my garden, I'm using the same probe lens, Panasonic G86, and Metabone speed booster. But instead of my normal tripod, I'm using my Z Flex tripod head and mounted it on my mini tripod. If people are interested, I'll do another video about my current setups using this lens in the field. Let me know in the comments if that would interest you. Now as this is a fully manual lens, I'm having a manual focus. 
Um, so that is why I'm using the 7 inch LCD screen and focus peaking to help me focus. It was interesting to watch these wolf spiders. One spider would force another to move, which would make another one move, and so on, like a ripple effect. And the ants continue to incite fear in the spiders. This one looked almost like it was trying to actively move on the spiders. Perhaps they were too close to its nest or something. It was a productive few hours over a couple of days. Thanks for watching and let me know if you'd like some more videos of me using this wonderful lens.